Hi everybody and welcome to 442. I'm Kevin Ferguson. I have uh, Oliver Keohane and Shakes Rampelli in the house from Johannesburg. Shakes, how you doing, mate? Guys, I'm all right. I'm feeling good. Um, obviously, I was a little bit humbled last night by the uh, Liverpool versus Arsenal result. But other than that, I'm good. How are you guys? Yeah, I'm good. Um, yeah, I'm strong. I mean, I've, I, I enjoyed the football this weekend. I can't say I enjoyed the results, but there was some, there was some nice footy on display. You're going to get a bitch slap if you ever say to me that you're not strong at 21. With your I said I'm strong. No, that's what I said. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just... I'm just laying the, the foundations for, to avoid a bitch slap. Um, <laughs> interesting week in soccer, um, and we're starting to get a bit of focus on, on who might be battling for relegation, uh, what teams are going to be challenging for Europe, and, and what teams, if any, will be, will be challenging um, a Liverpool for, in, in the, to take away their, their, their title. Um, let's start with the... the, the, the surprise results from the weekend and what we can gleam out of that and let's start with Chelsea West Brom if you if you will indulge me you know, we, we said it be that I said that Frank Lampard could be the first coach fired because the expectations of spending that sort of money um, create create um, a, a champion uh, a championship uh, trophy or yeah. not a, a league trophy yeah you're not contenders then you should be winning the thing. Yeah, but uh, but I think the, 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 the what we're seeing is it's taking you know they had they had the culture of us against the world last year with no transfer and other transfer market and now they're sitting where they've spent all this money and they're plugging people in straight away and, and that's changed the culture and the dynamics of that team and to be honest they haven't looked good in any of their games. I mean, I, yeah. But no, you you're right, you're right, Kevin. You're very right when you say they haven't looked good in any of their games. Um, and the sense that I'm getting is you watch them against Brighton. Brighton were a lot better team. Yes, they did get the win. And then Liverpool, you just felt like, okay, but obviously the red card changed the game. Feel as though, like, I don't think they showed up as yet. And then West Brom, I think there was a sense of them being complacent um, going into that game. I think they felt that they were definitely going to get the win. And unfortunately, that didn't happen. Next thing, they find themselves 3-0 down. And there was a point where even Thiago Silva was very... Is it like a days ago with the ball? The ball comes to him. He's not handling it properly. Eventually, they counter um, and they get the goal and they score three goals. Eventually, they did come back. They did show massive character, which was great. The only problem I have is that it feels like Frank Lampard is sitting on the sidelines and it almost feels like he's waiting for his individual performance to do something. Yeah. So I'm waiting for team of I'm waiting for team of Werner to do something. I'm waiting for Kai Havertz to do something. I'm waiting for I don't know Karl Martin to do something. Which is what happened Whereas, at the end of the day. You know, if you look at those goals, Mason Mount, like you know, there's still. So what's that all about? No, there's there's still not much to be said about their team display. Even in the second half, as you 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 look at the goals that were scored, and they they were the individuals going and just kind of doing something. Mason Mount pulling out this huge. Um, shot, you know, to, to score that first goal. Like, there wasn't that much. You look at, like, a team, like how Liverpool plays, and regardless of what the scoreline is or how the game's going, you never get the sense that Liverpool's not in control, even when they're 1-0 down to Arsenal. You know, mm. it's like, they're just jelling. They're also a team of individuals that became these sort of individual powers at Liverpool, you know, came into their own. Chelsea's got all these superstars there, and they just don't look like a team that can play together at the moment. And I think it's kind of glaringly obvious, you know? It's a, it's a, Oliver, it's a great point that you mentioned there in terms of it's a bunch of individuals. They don't know how they're playing together. When you watch Ateta's Arsenal, you can see what they're trying to do. When you watch yeah. Bielsa, you see what they're trying to do. When you watch Klopp's Liverpool, you see what they're trying to do. And even when City lost 5-2 to Leicester, that's Pep's team. You can see what they're trying to do. That's how they pass the ball. But with Chelsea's one, it's like, what's the identity? What's going on? Yeah. And even the substitutions he made... I felt those are the substitutions you make when you're even playing FIFA as well. So yeah. if I'm playing against Oliver, I'm playing against Kevin, and I'm 3 0 down, what am I going to do? I'm going to throw in another striker, I'm going to throw in another attacker, and I'm going to keep all my forwards up front and hope that I cross the ball in or something and something happens. So it, it, there's no brilliance that I see that Frank Lampard is doing with the players. So, 
do you think this is do you think this is more an indication of like six or seven signings that have never played in the Premier League that don't know how to play together, or do you think it's just an indication of a manager that's not actually good enough? Mm, it's a good point. So it's a massive question that one's a question, and uh, I think it's a bit of both. Obviously, they need time to gel, and obviously, we have to consider the fact that there was a pandemic and there was a short preseason and all that. But also, I think there's Frank Lampard too, man. It has to take some responsibility in terms of what's the game plan. And if you're talking about time, you look at Ateta. You look at Ateta at Arsenal. He hasn't been there that long. He's only been there a couple of months. But already there's an identity in, in which Arsenal are playing at. Mm. So he's also taking some time. And, um, and like Kevin always mentions, if you're spending over 200 million and they're still linked with Declan Rice after all that yeah. money spent. So it's good. And just got Edward Mendy in as well. Yeah, if you spend that kind of money, you have to be you have to be winning the league. No, win well, you have to be winning the league, but you have to be at least. You have to be winning against West, West Brom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good year. Exactly, exactly my point. So they should have definitely got the result, and it puts more pressure on the next game. Yeah. Uh, what what sort of leash do you think that Lampert uh, Frank's on, in terms of? Uh, you know, balancing that, that, that team gelling and managing the expectations of the fans. Because, yes, he's an icon, a Chelsea icon, but people are the most fickle, uh, most fickle when it comes to passion and their sports. You know, it, I, I'd say he's got 10 games max to turn, this, to, to turn this thing around and get the results, start getting results, and, and by results, I mean winning, um, before... Because Abra Abramovich, Abramovich has the itchiest trigger finger in the Premier League. Yep, the one and only. I mean, he. Let's not forget, Roman Abramovich is the same guy who sacked uh, Roberto Di Matteo months after he won the Champions League, the first ever Champions League for Chelsea. So he is he is trigger happy. I can tell you that. I think with Frank Lampard, it's the fans are going to back him still because he's an icon. The fans are going to back him still because he made top four. But you're right. If there's no identity, if there's no wins, if by the time December comes around, then people are going to start to say, wait a second, man, I, 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 whoa, I, I don't know. And maybe the, 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 the trigger might be pulled then. So mm -hmm. even with the fans, I've been speaking with some Chelsea fans and with them too, there is a little bit of realisation they're getting in terms of we should have won the West Brom game. And unfortunately, that's, it's come so early. Had it come maybe later on in the season after the results, maybe he would have not been so much under pressure. But He's definitely under pressure, and the next game is Crystal Palace at home. Yes, that's it. But that's a, that's not going to be an easy fix. There's no easy fixtures in the Premier League. I think this weekend has taught us that. Yeah, and that's one of the most exciting things about watching the the English Premier League. But I want to ask you a, a, a you you question a question now: Are Everton and Leicester for real? Are Leicester on top of the league after three games? I know one one swallow doesn't make a summer, but you know they beat Man City. They sit at the top of the league, and you've got an under. You've got you got Leicester, I think. You've got Liverpool and Everton, mm -hmm. and uh, in two weeks' time, I think there's the Everton Liverpool derby. So I'm hoping that they both go undefeated this weekend to set up something really, really mouthwatering, as if we need it to be any more mouthwatering. But are Leicester for real? Uh, look, I mean, I think Leicester started really well. I have to give them that they've scored goals. Um, their performance against City was massive. But I think aided by three penalties, though. Yeah. Yeah, well, three penalties. Yeah, I mean, you have to score them, right? So, so they got the they got the three penalties, and I I still don't feel because if you watch last season too, Leicester started the same way as well. You know, they were fighting second with Manchester City for some time until until the wheels started to come off. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna give them some time before we get there. And then as for Everton. I mean, obviously, Colin Chalotti is doing something different. Um, they're playing much better. They, they're scoring more goals. Um, the striker, Kyvett Lewin, is doing really well. Kyvett but Lewin the next is test, on fire, man. Yeah, he's on fire. But the, but the next test is the big one. It's Liverpool. So their performance in that game in the league against Liverpool is going to be... It's going to show where they are at. I'm not expecting them to beat Liverpool, but I would think they would give them a game. And then try to see where they are at, you know. So before Arsenal, before last night's result, for example, Arsenal used to get battered by Liverpool. Uh, Unai Emery got beat 
Arsenal Wenger's Arsenal got beat as well. And yesterday's one, you could see Arsenal are a little harder and they're not as soft as what they used to be. And I think Everton needs to prove that against um, Liverpool. That's what I would say. And look, I think that Calvert, is it Calvert-Lewis? Calvert-Lewin, yeah. Calvert-Lewin, sorry. He could score 20-plus goals this year, 25, with the service he's getting from James, eh? Mm. I mean, they, yeah. they just look like... They've got Angelotti, and this is what I mean about managers. Within three games, you can tell that they've got Angelotti's stamp all over that team. Where yes. the Frank Lampard stamp is like someone... someone playing uh, pin the tail on the donkey and smacked somebody off the forehead with a for sale sign. I mean, it's, it's yeah, ridiculous. Somebody with Thiago Silva. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, so you can see the class of Angelotti. And this is where I think Lampert's out of his... He was great to be a mucker and, and, uh, and an iconic uh, choice to manage a season where they didn't have transfers. But now you start spending $200 million, you bring in all these personalities, these egos... And that's a different proposition to be, to be managing, especially when you've set up a culture beforehand um, that's, you know, mm. us against the world. Nah, for sure. I mean, obviously, uh, Colin Trotti's had his whole career dealing with egos. I mean, he managed the great AC Milan side. He managed the great Real Madrid side that won the, the Champions League in 2014, I think. Um, so he's always had to deal with um, big personalities, whereas Frank, on the other hand, it's his first test to manage big personalities, and so far, he's still trying to figure it out, and um, and that's the credit I have to give to Everton, but Everton, their big test is Liverpool um, soon, and once that game comes, that's where you sort of start to see how are they performing, where are they at. Well, let's hope, let's wait for the next chapter, and Jakes, it's always great talking to you, thanks for your input. Ollie, thanks for your input, mate. And see you next week. <laughs>